Hey Power Rappers, this is Brian Knight from Pragmatic Works, and in today's video, we're going to show you how to take your model-driven apps to the next level with by editing the command bar with PowerFX code. So stay tuned. Welcome back. The line between canvas and model-driven is starting to blur. It's been blurring for a while with the introduction of custom pages and other things, but today we can now introduce new buttons into a model driven application, it's custom buttons that you develop. And in today's video, we're gonna show you just how to do that. We're gonna show you how to introduce a Power FX button. You've been long been able to, able to actually add your own buttons uh, up there for a while, but now you can actually use your Canvas experience to introduce new buttons and to the top of your model driven application. So let's see how we can do this. So first of all, I, I build a very simple application. This simple application, uh, its role is to look at a loan and you can see this, this uh, loan for $500 a month is payable over 12 months starting on this date. So that's my, that's my goal here is essentially once I hit the button, I want to be able to see 12 loan payments for $500 starting on, I'll call it 827 in my case, I want to start on that debt date. That's the start, the signature date of the loan, and I want to start one month after the signature date. All right, so I should then be able to go over loan payments and see 12 records here. To do this, I'm going to introduce a new button up top called Create Payment Schedule. And to do that, we will go open up our application inside of the solution. So I'll just go and select this. And let's go to edit. Now I built this application out in just a few seconds, so it's not very pretty, but it will work for the purpose of what we're going to do. You'll notice up top when I go to add page, I do have things like custom pages now built in. This is for canvas pages that can interact with your model driven app. In my case though, I'm gonna go and select this loan table and I'm gonna select edit command bar. It will then ask me, well, what bar do you wanna edit? Do you wanna do your form, your grid or your subgrid? So I'm gonna go ahead and select my main form. Now this might take it a few seconds to open up for you the first time. And as it opens up, a few things to note, you gotta find where you wanna put the button so you can, oh, that's all right. When it pops up that, say override. Uh, the reason it's saying override is because I built this example out a moment ago also, and those, some of that legacy stuff is still in here. So I'm gonna go ahead and select whatever button I wanna put this in, hit the new button, and I'll hit command. But notice you can also put drop down boxes and split modes here. If you got a pop-up, you wanna make sure you select Power FX. When, when I click on Command here, it will ask me what type of button I wanna create the first time you do it. So make sure you select Power FX if that happens. You'll also see on the right side to run a formula versus JavaScript. Now, when you hit Power FX, it takes a few seconds because what it has to do is create a component library for you in your solution. So that might take it a good 30 to 45 seconds. Pause me if you're playing along at home. And I'll go ahead and create one called Create Loan Schedule, or I'll call it Payment Schedule in my case. There we go. I'll put whatever icon I want to use for this. So this icon just to make it a little more noticeable. Of course, you can upload your own custom icons as well. But in my case, I'll just pick, a, I don't know, something like that. All right. Uh, it's going to run a formula. It is going to show it. And you can also make it conditional based on a certain formula also. That's brand spanking new. And as I go into this, I can then go up here and go top and it says true, add my formula. But this is going to interact with another table. And because of that, I need to make sure that I go through and specify other tables that, that this command bar can interact with. To do that, I need to go ahead up top and where it says open command library, add that connection to it. Uh, I'll first save this. Okay, oh no, I hit open command library. This will take it about 30 or 45 seconds to open up, and it's gonna open up a very familiar interface. This interface is gonna basically the Canvas application interface. And from here, you can add all your other tables and any kind of other custom stuff that you wanna do. In my case, we're gonna keep this really simple and just add our connections to this. So give it a few seconds, okay, there we go. And while it's doing this, there's a few little quirks right now, at least at the time of this recording, as we, as we film this. So as you make changes to this, you might have to go back to your solution and hit save all customization, or publish all customizations when you make these changes. So if you're not seeing the results of your work in the application, 
make sure you go publish all customizations. We'll see the day if that's still required. All right, now that I've done that, you've got my command bar right here. I think I called it uh, create payment schedule. Then I can go over to my database icon. I'll hit the add data. I did not have to select that component, by the way. I'm just adding my data. And then I'm gonna do uh, my loan payments table there. When I select that, I now can access both these tables. Now, as I do that also, you're gonna wanna save it. And if this is version two of your component library, make sure you publish it also so your users can then use that as well. Okay, this is my version two and that's why I'm publishing it right now. But the first, for the first time, it's not really required. After you're done that, you can go ahead and leave the screen and go back to when you came. Oh, let me go ahead and close that, there we go. All right, now, now that I'm back here, I'm gonna go ahead and create that schedule. Now, a few things we can do just really simply right now. Uh, one is to do the notify code up top. There we go. Now, there are some functions that are not available to you in this PowerFX area. Things like lookups and all that at the time of this recording were not available. There's a whole uh, display, a whole list of those, those functions that do not work in the description of this video. All right, so I'm gonna say like payment schedule made. And I can make this, uh, oh, I need to make a double quote there. Uh, okay, and then do, let's go ahead and, and leave it at that. All right, good enough. So if I do that something simple like that, hit save and publish, I can then go back to my application and test this. And then we're gonna put some other code inside this to make it really, really flow. But at its, at its core, it's as simple as that. Now, after I do that, I think I've got the application open already. I do right here. I'll go ahead and do a hard refresh, hold the control key down and refresh your browser. And then you might see the button up top, create payment schedule. If I click on that, it looks like they did fix the bug where I didn't have to publish all customization. So you'll now see my, my payment schedule up there. Of course, you can color that and do whatever you want to with that also. So we're gonna simplify this just to show you the functionality and the possibilities. All right, next, let's go back over to our command bar. And now let's put our real code in here. So I'm gonna hit the down arrow so we can kind of see the rest of our code. And I'll put my code right above our notify here. So our first thing I wanna do is I wanna go ahead and kill the old uh, payment schedules if there happens to be one. So the remove if function can do that for removing an old, an old payment schedule. This is one that's in Canvas applications for years here also, for, well, for a long time since the beginning. And what table do you wanna remove it from? Well, it's a loan, I think it's loan schedule, or loan payments, there it is. There we go, oop, I have an extra single tick there. And what condition do you wanna do? Well, I want uh, the loan, the, uh, I think it's called the loan. I think it's called a loan here. There it is, make sure you use a singular version, that's my column. So this column right here matches uh, in that payment schedule table, a column called loan, okay? So it, that is the, uh, the, 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 the key, the primary key for that given, that given uh, loan here. All right, then I'll say it's equal to, and now here's the, here's the cool part. We wanna go ahead and find out what record you select. So what loan do you want to, what, what, what loan do you wanna remove its payment schedule for? So loan is gonna be equal to self dot selected dot item. This gives me the row I'm looking at right now. And that should be good enough. I could actually go deeper into it, but uh, let's start there. All right, oh, I need one more area. I need to also have loan here as well. All right, cool. Now I'm getting a little bit of a warning here and it's saying this is a record on the left and this is a, so I'll do loan.loan, .loan. there we go. And that should match the two GUIDs now. So we got loan on the left, loan on the right, and the two GUIDs, I'll put my semicolon, and then now that will remove all the payment schedules for a given loan. Next, I wanna go ahead and do a loop over this to basically inject those 12 records into this. For that, I'm gonna do a for all command, all right? And the for all command basically does a loop inside of PowerFX. Uh, and I'm gonna loop over all of my, um, so for my, my schedule of this, okay, oops, sorry. Uh, for my schedule, I'm gonna loop over, let me get rid of my face here so you can see the full thing here, there we go. Uh, so for, uh, for this, I wanna use a sequence command. The sequence command is going to loop over a certain amount of records, a certain number of records in my case. So for the sequence, I wanna find out how many payments I'm expecting on this loan. So that, again, that would be self.selected. This, oop, key, darn key lock, key, uh, there we go, uh, self.selected. This is pulling the given record I'm looking at in that form, self.selected. 
then dot item tells me the record I'm looking at. Then I can go in and say, all right, I want the sket the uh, the payment number, payment terms, I believe it is. There it is. And then I can close the parenthesis. So for every record in that sequence, then I'll do a comma, and then I can close it right here. Okay, and put my semicolon. So for every record in this, it's going to do something. Just to test to make sure that I'm actually okay right now, I could put my notify command up here. We can see all the red squigglies go away. So we can see that from a coding side, we're okay right now. We just got to put our code between these now. It doesn't know what to do right now. So for every, so if I say there's 12 payments, this right here is going to give me the number of 12, 12 by having self.selected.item. So it's going to do a loop 12 times here. And for every time I do, I want to go ahead and do a patch command to inject the record into another table. So I'm going to patch into my loan payment table now. That's the other table, not this one right here. Then I'll do a comma. I want to go ahead and insert a record. So I'm going to go ahead and do the defaults command. And I have videos on all these in case you're curious. Then I'm going to go ahead and say, uh, I need to go ahead and specify what do I want to put where. So I'll do my curly braces and my parentheses. And we can see it looks like my code is happy right now. There's no red squigglies. So inside, I always start there with a patch command. That way I can kind of see the, see the records as I do this also and see what issues I'm going to have. But now that I've got that, my curly braces will have the records I want. So I can hop over to my form real quick and we can see that for this payment schedule, I'm expecting a column called payment sequence number, which is the, the payment number I'm looking at, amount, bill date, and loan. All right, so let's start with the, um, uh, the uh, payment sequence number. There it is. So the payment sequence number is going to be equal to the number that I'm in, the, the iteration of the loop I'm in. To do that, you may already know this, it is this record. This record will allow you to look at what iteration in a for loop you are. And if I'm looking at record four, I can then pull information out of record four. In my case, all I need is dot value, which gives me the payment term here in this case. So that will be a number from one to 12 in my case, okay? Then I can do a comma and I have payment, uh, I think it's, uh, oh, let me find out, I think it's amount, I believe, there it is. And this will be equal to, again, self.selected.item.amount. Uh, there we go. Uh, next item is going to be the date, I believe, bill date. There we go. This is gonna be, again, self.selected, oh, selected dot item dot start date, but that's not quite good enough, is it? I don't wanna have the same payment every single day. So I need to basically find out what iteration of the loop I'm in, and based on the iteration of the loop, uh, add a month to that. So I can, I'm on January 1st, February 1st, and so on and so on. So let's go back there again and find out how we can do that. So this gives me the same date over and over and over again. So what I need to do is I need to do a date add function in front of this. To, to make this a little clear, let me put an enter right here so we can kind of see where we're gonna put this. So I'm gonna put date add, do an open parenthesis, and then uh, take, my, take my start date that we have there, do a comma one, that gives me one month on top of that. And actually, no, not, not one. I need to actually get the, uh, um, the iteration of my loop. So take the start date and add whatever iteration loop I'm in. So it might be, I'm, I'm in June now, so that'd be six in my case. So again, that would be uh, this record dot value. Okay, that tells me which, which iteration of loop I'm in, comma, and then do you want a day, month? I'm gonna do months. All right, so it's not quite happy here. Uh, oh, and I need to close my parentheses. There we go. All right, so that should give me what iteration of loop I'm in and add that many numbers to it. And my last one was just the, uh, the loan number that I wanna put this onto. And I should have be able to do this record, uh, this record, excuse me. That should be uh, self.selected.item. There we go. And that will give me the loan. That's a record here because I didn't actually refer to an individual GUID. It's a, the record that would handle a lookup in my case. All right, with that all done, unfortunately I can't format this to be prettier here, but I should be able to hit save and publish, make sure there's no squiggly marks at the bottom here, and then at that point we're ready to go ahead and do this. Each time you hit save and publish, it takes about 30 to 40 seconds to do its thing here. Uh, and again, if, if you do not see the results of your work, uh, like for example, if I make this, uh, make an explanation point, that's one way I kind of test to see, did, did my stuff actually save? If it doesn't save, all you have to do is go over to the um, 
all you have to do is go over to the, uh, the, the solution and hit uh, publish all customizations. So just a little gotcha like around that. Now let's go back over to my app. I will do a hard refresh. Then I will hit my button. All right. Oh, so it says it's a new version of the app here. Let me make sure I do a hard refresh again because it may not be getting that latest version. I think it did now. Hit create payment schedule. It says it's been done and I can go to related and loan payments and hopefully now I'm not seeing any records. So I've got some type of quirk. You'll notice there's no explanation point up here. So my publish did not work. This is one of the, one of the challenges I, I found when I was working on this. And when, I, when this happens, I have to go back to the all area, go back to my overview and just hit publish all customizations right up top. After I do that, I keep, keep, typically keep this open very, very readily. Uh, this takes again about 45 seconds to do its thing. After it does that, we'll just make sure we, we go back and do a hard refresh of our application and then we're ready to play again. So give this about a few seconds here and a few other things to note as you do this. You'll notice that it did create a solution right here. That's my solution, that component library that it created right there. That component library is used uh, to, 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 to add the other connections inside of here. Let's go back to my application. All right, do a hard refresh. We should then be able to dismiss all the little pop-ups, go back to my loan, go back to my loan here, then hit create payment schedule. What I'm looking for is an explanation point up top as I do this. All right, there we go. I see an explanation point. I should be able to go to related loan payments and there they all are. We can also go to active loan payments and see a prettier view of that. But you can see my sequence number all going from one to 12. My payment amount, I start one month after. That's one of the quirks. So if I wanted to have the current month because I'm using data add, I would need to make sure that I have that into the, uh, have, a, have outside the loop a patch statement and then the patch statement in the loop also. So it's an easy way to fix that uh, if you wanted to. I'll put the code of that in the chat and the uh, description of the video also in case you're curious. All right, so in this video, we showed you how to integrate buttons, custom buttons into grids, subgrids, or also forms as well. As part of that, you can do a lot more with this, just a tip of the iceberg but allows you to really take your model driven apps to the next level. In case you're curious, we have things like virtual mentoring. You'll find descriptions of that in the, in the, uh, the description of the video uh, where we can help you get unstuck if you have any challenges. We also do things like hackathons. We help you how to teach you how to fish as well as public classes as well. Thanks for watching this uh, video today and please do subscribe. If you find this interesting and you want to see more videos like it. Have a great day. Goodbye.